you have this really rosy idea of a philosophy and a plan and unfortunately it doesn't work all the time. Paul Simpson, I'm the head coach for England under 20s this season. I think it's really important to, to not to have expectations that you're going to go and start at the top because that very rarely happens. I think you have to be prepared to go and earn your stripes and work your way up through the system. Um, I, I, I don't, you know, I, I, I remember my first days in coaching. I was coaching the Blackburn Rovers and Derby County under eights and under nines and went from there into a, a first team manager's job, which it's, you're still dealing with the same problems. Obviously with first team players, I wasn't having to deal with fastening shoelaces and this sort of stuff, but you're still dealing with people. You're still trying to learn different personalities and, ha and what makes one person tick. So I think it's really important to, for, for one, to get in and learn the real basics of the role, wh whether that be the organization, whether that be how you want to set your discs up when you're marking things out, really, really basic things. It's great to do that with, with younger players, whether that be youth team, whether that be reserve team players, whether that be going and getting involved with a local boys club, a little local girls club, where you can, you can go and coach a team and you can get used to your own voice and, and used to passing on information. Um, I think it's really, really important, but I would encourage people to, to be getting into sport because it is a, it's a fantastic life if you can be in. You know, I've been really, really fortunate. I think the, the, the way I try to go about it, I, I, I try to place importance on every single person in the group. So whoever they may be, you know, whether that be um, the, the head coach, whether it be a, a, one of the, the, the on-grass coaches, whether it be the kit man, whoever, everybody has a really important role to play. And, and one of the things that um, was a real test for me when we went out to the World Cup finals, it, it was the first time that we'd had a really big group of staff. We had 19 full-time staff with us over the 35 days. And that became a big challenge looking after everybody and making sure every, everybody felt involved, everybody felt as though they had a say in it. And so I think that that's the culture that I try to create, that everybody feels involved in it, everybody feels part of the process. Going on to the players, and the culture that we, we want to create and that I am enjoying creating is that the players have an ownership. They, they're prepared. They, firstly, they, ha they understand the identity of what it means to be an England player, what, what, what value that adds to, um, to, to them as a, as a person and as a football player. And then we want them to own, own the game as well. We want them to be uh, decision makers, to, to be able to correct things on the field. So we try to challenge them with giving them a little bit of chaos in training so that it's, it's not structured, it's not dead straightforward. They have to make decisions because when they're out on the grass, that's what they have to do as well. And I think, I think by doing that, by, by giving them that ownership, they actually feel, in, feel involved in it all as well and it, and it makes them stronger, makes them, them better, better people and better players and, and for me that is a really important thing you know. As a coach I don't think we're here just to actually create good footballers and to make them um, better footballers, I think we're here to make them better people as well and I think if we can go away with somebody becoming a better person for, for information or something that we've done on a camp then I also think that's a feather in the cap on top of winning games of football. I remember my first management job when I was at Rochdale going in and thinking I would be able to go and change people because this is what I wanted and I realised very quickly you're not going to change people. You can, you can get the best out of them by treating people differently but you can't just have one, one type of character, one type of personality in your group. You've got to, you've got to be prepared to, to understand that there is a, a, a real variance to, to the way people act. I think young people now, they don't react to, to real negative feedback, they, they react to positive and I think if you, if you can dress it up in a way that you're giving them a little bit of criticism but it's in a positive light, I think that's the way that they react and um, it's something that we, are, that we are really trying to do because in the heat of the battle, in the heat of the moment, whether it be a training session, whether it be a game, it's, it's sometimes difficult to remain a, with a positive, um, a positive mindset, but it's something that we are really trying to do. So when I'm communicating, I want to try and be positive. I want to be really simple with messages. I want to be clear with messages and not try and overload them with loads and loads of information. Um, if, I, if I sort of use an example of a half time when we come in, when 
players have just run around, run the socks off for 45, 46, 47 minutes, whatever it may be. They then come in, they're not going to be in a state of mind where they can really absorb new information and, and take it all on board. So we, we try to just be really simple, really clear. We just use three messages um, and, and try and send them away out back onto the pitch to go and run around for another 45 or, or more minutes. Um, with, with a, a positive mindset and I think that's really important. So being positive, even if you have to have a little bit of edge to it and there's a, there's a, a, a criticism to it, I think if you can dress it up in a positive way that can be really effective. I think it, when it's, it's the one thing that I didn't really understand about how important that was, the managing upwards. Everybody thinks as a coach you're just managing players and I've sort of made a gesture there that they're below, which that's probably wrong because it, you have to try and all be on the same level, but managing up is a real challenge and it's something that you have to get right. I'll hold my hands up, I didn't get it right on a few occasions, I, I didn't handle that side of it very well. But I look on that as part of my education as well, you know, not, not just the, the university and the coaching courses um, and UCFB, the, the, the information that you can get from them. You have to be learning on the job as well. And, and that was something that was really important to me. Um, but you need to be able to work with chief executives, directors, um, even more so now the media side of it is enormous. You have to be able to handle the media. Um, we've gone from the days when I first started playing where you would play on a Saturday, you'd get the pink paper on a Saturday night in Manchester and then nobody would talk about football or, or nothing in the, in the public eye would be spoken about till the following weekend. Now there's message boards, there's radio phone-ins, there's, there's everything going on so that you have to be able to, to deal with that media side. And I think if you can edu educate yourself as much as possible before you go into your job, that, that will really stand you in good stead because I can sit here now and hold my hand up and say I wasn't educated enough in it when I first started and it was something that uh, I basically gave people a stick to beat me with because of the, the way that I handled some things. I think it's a massive part of, um, of you getting yourself involved in, in the game. Um, not only coaching qualifications, but everything that you can do to give you some experiences that, that, that will help you. I made a decision when I was still playing, I think I was about 31 at the time, I decided to go and do a sports science degree. Um, I, I just felt that there was gonna be a lot of people who would have coaching badges, but not everybody would have a, a, a bit of a knowledge of the sports science side to go alongside it. So, I can't ever sit and say that I have stood and delivered a sports science presentation to anybody, but just having that bit of knowledge has certainly helped me. And I'd encourage anybody who's wanting to, to get into football, get into coaching, the media side, anything, educate yourself as much as you possibly can to give yourself a real good base to work from. I think you've got to surround yourself with positive people. Um, I think that's really important. Um, I think you've got to not be afraid of surrounding yourself with people who are better than you. I think the, you know, you, if you can get somebody who is really, really good at their specific role, bring them in. The, the more people who you can go and learn from and who you can, who you can develop with, has got to be good for you. So, you know, I, I, I always think you, you surround yourself with, with really good people, really positive people, people who can, who can bring something to the group, um, whether that be in the way that they coach, whether that is something that they bring in their presentation skills, whether it's their enthusiasm, whatever it might be, um, I think it's really important that you do that. It's a tough one um, dealing, with, dealing with the setbacks because we are going to get it. I always remember a piece of advice that um, an old manager of mine, Jim Smith, gave me when I was playing at Derby County and I'd, I chatted to him about going into management and what did I need to be prepared for. And he said, just be prepared, you're gonna get the sack one day. Um, don't be afraid of it, because it's not a personal thing, it's just the nature of the game. Now, I'm sure your students don't want to hear that you're going to get the sack one day, but just be prepared for it. Just, just be strong enough to know that if you go into a job, if you go into any coaching role, any media role, if you go and do it how you want to do it, and, and you're really clear about your, about your plan to go and do it, if it doesn't work, 
sometimes you have to just hold your hands up and um, I think you've just got to be strong enough to be able to deal with that setback whether it whether it's not to the extremes of, of being sacked whether the setback is losing a game whether a setback is doing a, an article for a, for a newspaper that doesn't get printed whatever that may be just be prepared to deal with it learn from it try and find out why you why you failed why, why you fell um, a little bit too short make sure you you come back stronger for it and i think that's the best thing you can do don't don't go in fearing that just go in and be prepared to learn from every experience that you can i have used sports psychologists not not when i've been a, a manager at club level um, i've worked at um, at derby county where we had um, bill beswick was involved and we had steve black when i was at newcastle united and um, working in the fa we have a, a people and team development department and, and I think it is very important. Um, I'll be honest with you, years ago, I wouldn't have paid much attention to it, and particularly when I was a player, I didn't. But I do look back now and think, how much better could I have been in my head? Um, not so much the physical side, but how much better could I have been in my head if we'd have had that sort of help all these years ago? So I think it is really important. They bring, they bring something different to the group, you know, we have, coaches who work on the grass, we have medical people who can work if there's any issues or in the, in the preparation and the recovery side of the game. But the mind is such a powerful, powerful tool for players now and for coaches and I think it's really important that psychology is used um, to help the players, to help the players deal with, with any issues. Um, not only the negative side but to deal with the positive. You know, the, the game now has got so many rewards for footballers that I think they need to be educated on how to deal with that and I think the psychology side is massive so anybody who is thinking of, of going down that route of psychology I think it's going to get bigger and bigger I think it's going to be more important in, in, in all sports that there is somebody there who can help the players on, on, the, uh, on the mind side of it. it. You know if I'm going to be really honest with you the, the best moment is actually still sitting here today and being involved in football starting out at 16 um, as, an, as an apprentice at Manchester City and wanting to get a professional contract, then going and having a career that stopped just short of my 40th birthday, going into management, getting coaching experience, working with some fantastic people in some great organisations. Um, and I even include the setbacks in that because there was good times involved. Um, but all of that all of the, the work that I did as a player, the work that I did on the coaching badges, my sports science degree, it all led to what has to be considered the pinnacle where we win the World Cup with the under 20s in South Korea. But it's the whole experience, the whole life of being involved in football just, just gives you a buzz every single day you wake up to know that you're involved in a sport that you love, um, a sport that it interests so many people in our country and around the world. I think if you work really hard and you get the opportunity, grab it with both hands and keep learning and keep getting experiences to make you even better. We've already touched on the resilience. You've got to have resilience. You've got to be prepared to come and bounce back after a setback. But the biggest thing for me is you've got to be adaptable. Um, I think you, when you first start out in, the, in your career as, as, a, as a coach or as a manager, as I did, you have this really rosy idea of a philosophy and a plan and unfortunately it doesn't work all the time so I think you've got to be adaptable. I went in thinking I want my teams to play this way, I want to do this and then suddenly you look at your players and think they're not really capable of doing that so you've got to be in the mindset that this is what I would like but I might have to change that, I might have to be adaptable. So I think you've got to be resilient, but you've also got to have an adaptability about you that you can change for different situations. And sometimes that only comes by trying things. So that goes back to the getting involved in some grassroots teams, getting involved in, in youth football. Go and make your mistakes there, go and learn from those mistakes and, and build your build your coaching manual, build your coaching knowledge through, through the experience that you've gained.